and cut that spooky music out because we are about to make our clay votives. You'll need yourself a station look, looking similar to mine. If you don't have that, don't worry. We'll go through everything together. So first, of course, what you need for this beautiful station is your clay that you should have gotten from us. A little piece of paper, some water, but not a lot. And then I have my skewer, also should have been provided from us, and a straw, also should have been provided from us. We're good to go. This guy is real easy. First we want to start out, let's make sure this is a ball. We should have it already pretty well laid out for you, nice and smooth, pretty dense. You don't have to do anything special. To get started, you stick your thumb straight into the ball of clay, just like that. It's not all the way through. It's just so it's, you know, my thumb is partially in there. And we're going to start pinching the edges. The way that I pinch the edges is I pinch like a crab claw. There you go. And I just keep twisting and turning my pot and pinching. You can, my, I was showing you there that I, the bottom is still a little thick. It's got a little thickness to it. And that's because I'm going to squeeze it with my right hand in this video here. And I start to create a cone out of all that additional clay that's hanging out on the end. It's nothing crazy going on. I have honestly just pinched the sides of my clay to create this hollow cone. And then I squeeze the top in my hand. I bent mine over just a little bit to the side because I want my little ghost head to kind of be leaning. And now for the super fun part, after you get this cone shape, which if you didn't get it as quick as I did, don't stress, that's the glory of the video. Just pause, rewind, whatever. And you can just keep rewatching until you're satisfied with your cone. Because I am just gonna spend this time to smooth it out. This is what makes a good clay project great. When you take that time to smooth out the clay. Honestly, I'm just, you know, turning my project, checking for all of these little cracks in the clay and all of these areas that aren't smooth. And I'm dragging my finger down along to make it nice and smooth. I'm aware I tricked you a little when I said this is the fun part. For a lot, it can be quite boring, but I'm not lying to you. It is important. So look at me directly in the eyeball, okay, when I tell you that you have got to do this part. If you skimp on the smoothing, your project is not going to look as great as you're hoping for it to look. Now that I've got that out of the way, I have told you the serious stuff. We're going to speed this along just a tiny bit until I'm ready for my next step. I'm taking a quick break from being super speedy to let you know that periodically I do push my cone shape down along the surface that I'm working on periodically. This helps ensure that by the time I'm done with all of my smoothing and whatever I've got going on, my pinching, smoothing, even cutting later, that we are going to actually have a product that will sit flat on a shelf table or whatever service you're working with. Okay, back to being speedy. There are a couple of other things I do when smoothing. Sometimes when I can't get that clay to move in a specific spot, I use the back of my nail as opposed to the smooth part of my finger or thumb. That's just a little more aggressive and creates more of a scraping notion. I also periodically am checking the bottom rim and I sometimes smooth out the interior, although the inside doesn't matter as much. Okay, I'm feeling pretty good about this guy and I think I'm ready. I like this side the best, so that's where I'm going to put my face. I'm going to slide my hand inside so that I have a nice little platform to work off of and I'm going to gently start carving out a mouth. If you are timid about drawing a face, I like to just jump straight in. I always do these funny frowny faces for my Halloween critters. Um, other common really silly and easy cute faces are just making a solid O for a ghost mouth, but you can always lightly 
scratch the clay or draw into the clay before you just start carving chunks out if you're a little worried about how it's going to look. I have been using the pointy side of my skewer. It's just help more helpful. The straw is a little bit of a cheat for the eyes, although I want the hole bigger than just one straw hole like so. I just kind of keep poking at it until I get a large enough hole that I'm content with. And then I just take my skewer and kind of rim the inside of that eye socket I just created to smooth it all out and make it look less like, you know, we used a hole punch and punched a bunch of different holes in more like one smooth oval. Again, for more fun, we need to smooth out those edges. I don't want it to look like super rigid and cut. You'll notice when you cut the clay, you always have those harsh edges. Some parts look torn. So just take your time, smooth out those areas as well, make it look uniform. Otherwise, it's just going to look like, you know, cuts chunk out of your uh, cuts um, made right out of either your chunk of clay. So using your fingers and your thumbs to really smooth it out. The edge on the outside is obviously the most important, but I do like to get in there and smooth out the entirety of that thickness there. Just makes it look nicer, smoother, and also along the inside. That way it's all one seamless area. My fingers were getting a little crusty. That's the only time I use water in this project ever, because if I am putting little crusty chunks of clay all over that are like cracking off my fingers from smoothing out the clay. That's when you can just dip your fingers in the water and rub them together so that you can re-moisten all those little crickly cracks that land on your finger so they don't shed so much. There you go, you can see I'm smoothing it out on the inside too. I don't skimp. Okay. Our little ghostie is looking pretty spooky. I love him so much. Now one thing that might surprise you is even though this clay is gray today, when we fire it in our kilns, it is going to be a nice, bright, sh shiny white. So your ghost will in fact be all finished and ready for pickup whenever you come get the rest of your items that you've dropped off from your basket. Awesome job, guys. Some final things to bring him back. You will want to put your cute little ghosty back in his bag so that it doesn't get super, super dry too fast when you return him. And finally, use your skewer and write your dang name in there because we gotta know who it belongs to. You wouldn't believe how many little ghosties we're gonna have back. Okay. I can't wait to see all your ghosties. They'll be so spooky and fantastic.